The lion on the Chelsea Football Club badge is a popular, evolving beast that in one form or another has been around since the club's earliest days. It initially arrived in 1907 used on commemorative badges presented to club directors after the pensioners' first promotion to Division 1. Central to it was the rampant lion of the Cadogans, and Lord Cadogan was president of Chelsea FC. The lion then disappeared from the stage for almost half a century. For a few years, in the 1930s, in fact, the Chelsea programme used an unofficial badge, not of a lion, but a Chelsea pensioner, inspired by the club's first nickname, the Pensioners. The old fellow called Percy in club cartoons was a reference to the army veterans resident at the nearby hospital to whom tribute is still paid to this day. In all that time, the pensioner himself never actually made it onto the team shirts. The lion roared back in 1953 in an amended version of the old Chelsea coat of arms and was used on official club suits. Remember those jokes about the pensioners? No more of those now. Watch those boys go. The soon-to-be title winning manager Ted Drake suggested more modern and powerful club branding was needed. And so, springing from the coats of arms and into club history came the rampant lion holding a staff known as a crozier which was that of the Abbot of Westminster whose jurisdiction extended over Chelsea. The three Tudor Roses represented England and of course there were a couple of footballs in there too. By the early 1960s this crest had made its way onto the players shirts and there it stayed for more or less a generation. There were slight tweaks and short-lived standings along the way. However, the central figure, our upright furry friend, Crozier and Poor, always returned. Until that is 1986 when chairman Ken Bates opted for a modern twist. Football was becoming more commercial and clearly given the Lions' Cadogan heritage, this wasn't a logo the club could simply trademark. Bates therefore arranged a makeover and so arrived a curious new animal. Still a lion, albeit a rather more minimalist version, astride the letters CFC. From here until the Roman Revolution, this would be Chelsea's lion. There were several variations on the shirts. The beast was white, blue, yellow, blue and yellow, and even red for a while. But one thing this version never managed to be was popular. Happily, there would eventually be another reboot, one which came amidst the whirlwind of change, brought about by the arrival of Roman Abramovich in 2003. As supporters quickly saw their dreams realised, much better players, much higher expectations and of course much more silverware, the new ownership was also happy to tend to the slightly more trivial matters that remained close to the hearts of the club faithful. Give us our lion back, said the fans forums. And in 2005, it happened. What a year all round. Chelsea were champions for the second time ever and the first time in exactly 50 years. Now, with the club about to celebrate its 100th birthday for the centenary season, the game's newly crowned kings would wear a kit trimmed with gold. And yes, the original line came roaring back. Blue, upright, quasi and poor, complete with roses and footballs, and there it stayed ever since. Since 1980, of course, it has been seen and enjoyed in a cuddly, three-dimensional mascot form. Chelsea's lion may technically have hit retirement age, but through all its forms, whether regal, modern or furry, it will long remain the symbol of Chelsea's pride.